So next up, I'm like the economic Make-A-Wish Foundation here, except for healthy people, that I am about to make someone's dream come true here. So we have a book here. It's called Naked Statistics by a guy named Charles Whelan. You may have seen it. And in this book, I actually give this book to my music industry students because it's a really good book about statistics for people who don't really know anything. And don't know anything about statistics. Come on, come on. But in this book, again, read the whole thing, not just the abstract, he describes a fictional television show that he would like to pitch. And he calls this show CSI Regression Analysis. And he goes through and he says, you know, in this show, you would have people that are more attractive than is reasonable going and pouring over data, running regressions, running in when they have a new finding, and you know, answering really, really important questions, all the while doing so in their time off from their Olympic beach volleyball team. And of course, inexplicably, they would be doing all of this in their $4,000 Hugo Boss suits. And I really just love that for some reason, the suspension of disbelief that economists have covers basically everything except for budget constraints. <laughs> so, Charlie, what we're gonna do here is we are going to make your dreams come true. I came up with a little you know, proof of concept for a CSI regression analysis, and I learned a couple things. One, markets and television seem to be pretty efficient in that maybe there's a reason this doesn't actually exist. In that, you know, dead people seem to be a little bit more visually interesting than stayed up printouts, right? So that's one problem. Another problem is, well, given that people go and resources go to their most highly valued uses, there might just be a reason that I'm not a television writer. But nonetheless, we're gonna give it a go. So, I've enlisted the help of some local actors because I do live here in Boston, and they are going to give you their rendition of CSI regression analysis. Hey guys, internal affairs? No, we're with the program evaluation squad. The what? The program evaluation squad, you know, you catch criminals who commit crimes, we catch the culprits that, well, they do a lot of things, uh, but yeah, that's us. Oh, 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 the nerd police. Right, what, what are you doing here? We were assigned to try and find a relationship between the levels of police presence and then your crime rate in a given area. We figured this would be a logical place to start. And, and what happens to my job if I'm found not to be useful? We're economists, sir. Those types of questions are really beyond our jurisdiction. <laughs> and we are gonna need your data on the level of police numbers versus crime over a given time. Uh, I'm, I'm not exactly inclined to give out data that could cost me my job. Story of my life. Look, <laughs> am I going to need to get the captain involved here? No, 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 no. I'll, I'll get you what you need. All right. All right, so from what I see here, more cops actually leads to more crime. <laughs> Weird. Wait, what? That, that, that can't be right. Run, run the numbers again. They're, they're, yeah, after all, the first suspect that you catch is never the true culprit. We're looking into the matter, sir. He's right, you know. About what? There's a problem with our case. Look, I found these forms that request additional officers into the department. What do you notice? That the reason listed for the request is, oh, increased crime prevalence. 
So that means that we can't tell whether the police officers cause crime increases or if the crime increases cause more police officers to be hired. So we're back to square one? Maybe not. Look at this. Crime increases aren't the only reason that officers are requested. There's, a, there's no reason given on some of these, actually. What's up with that? I have a theory. Yes, yes, yes. But what I suspected, the requests match up with election cycles. Why would they do that? Well, I'm not really supposed to say anything, but the mayor does like us to beef up our presence right before an election, you know, to make him look good. Even though crime doesn't follow election cycles? Yeah, it's kind of... No, that's perfect, that's perfect. See, see, okay. If we look at the part of the data in the police presence that has to do with election cycles and not crime sprees, we can use that data to estimate the causal effects between the police and crime. That's us! <laughs> Sorry. Okay, this seems to make more sense. Now I see a negative elasticity of crime with respect to police, especially for violent crimes. <sighs> Actually, you made a math mistake. Where? Well, can't you? Uh, well, there goes my result. Can't you, can't you try something else? Let me see. How about firefighters? The number of firefighters is correlated with the number of police officers, but we certainly don't get more firefighters when we have more crime. That's us. You guys are real confusing. <laughs> all right, all right. That seems to make sense, but we're going to need a corroborating witness if we're going to build a strong case. What else affects the amount of, you know, police presence? Well, well, we do have more cops on the street when Homeland Security upgrades their terror alerts. Am I the only one who finds it funny that when the government is helpful for research, it's rarely on purpose? <laughs> okay, do we have historical data on terrorism levels? Way ahead of you. After all, it is my ass on the line here. Unbiased and unmotivated research at its best. <laughs> all right, no looking here. Yeah, another negative elasticity estimate. Me meaning? Meaning that the data shows that when police presence increases for reasons other than increases in crime, the increased presence leads to decreases in crime. It's good to feel useful. You can say, say that, that again. again.